we are on this one. Sixth week, main agenda is 3D visualization. Here, 3D visualization, SketchUp V-Ray, Max V-Ray, as well as 3D Max Mental Ray. So some, some basics, and still we are in the uh, 3D Max tutorial, as well as 3D graphics theory. Let's get back to the course material. Here I list of what to do today. Most of all, as always, lecture entitled 3, 3D Graphics and 3D Studio Max Design, focusing on lights and camera. So here we have series of five lab exercises. Actually not that tough or not that many. It's kind of step by step making progress so that we can move on some renderers and some detailed options in both V-Ray and Mental Ray renders. But as I mentioned before, our major focus, focus is on ML, Mental Ray, rather than V-Ray. Anyway, we have, you, you have to know V-Ray. So hopefully, check your computer out so that your computer has V-Ray environment or not. Actually, formally we did. We need to double check and move on V-Ray on top of 3D Max. So lab exercise one, two, kind of same, V-Ray and mentally some comparison, and then move on to texture mapping things and some easier lab exercise using camera, and then move on the final one, some kind of HD rendering using given geometry. So all submissions should be uploaded. I think, reflecting the other class, I think you can finish up everything within class hour today, of course. <coughs> uh, here are some hot keys in 3D Studio Max, such as RTW, G, and F3, 4. C, P, T, L, F for controlling your viewport, especially the object handling shortcuts, hotkeys, Q, W, E, R, H, Control A, Control D, Spacebar. They are very, very frequently used hotkeys. You have to remember what are they. M, Material Editor, F10, Render Setup, and Shift Q for rendering. Very fundamental keys, hot keys. So, you, so as a reminder, I display this one again. Let's move to lights, lighting system in 3D Max, and mental ray. As I introduced you before, photometric light or similar advanced lighting system, so-called ray traced lights, for rendering scenes, photorealistic and professional. Ray traced rights, kind of mandatory requirements for rendering scenes which are photorealistic and looking professional. What is ray traced? What the term ray traced means? Ray tracing. Actually, it is very kind of famous term. Ray traced or ray tracing? You know what is ray, and you already know what's trace. What is this? Watch this. Anyone who give me an answer? Try it. And Something that I mentioned and something put the note in this whiteboard things, they are all the major subject of your examination, okay? So please take a look at and think about what are they. Ray trace, ray tracing. Ray is, what is tracing? 
So, so is this correct? What, what's, what, what is this? Actually, this is the general term in computer graphics. I told you before, here is an object and the plane and the lighting source and the wall and attached lighting. So here is a ray reflection, another reflection, another reflection. This is one single ray tracing. But there are millions of rays, right? So millions of rays could be possibly traced for rendering this scene. So very bright, secondly bright, and a little bit bright. Anyway, light ray is reaching in this part, even if there is no possible way direct illumination could be reached in this area anyway. So as a result, what happened based on this ray tracing? What happened? Why we need this? Why we need to calculate in this kind of uh, ray traced calculation? Natural, yes, right. In other words, realistic. In other words, photorealistic. Okay? I told you before, Newton find, found some nature rules about uh, photons, lights, some optic, I don't know exact term. But anyway, that's how our nature visualizes our scene through your human eye. All rays traced from this bulb, from exterior, billions of rays surrounding us, interacting each other, so that we can see in this very re realistic scene, because this is real. But this is fake, computer modeled universe of discourse, UOD, right? In this world, anyway, we have to follow that kind of rules, even if we partially calculate them. Anyway, according to that kind of ray traced things, as a result, we can get some photorealistic rendering. That's how the mechanism is working. That is why I mentioned the photometric light, because basically it supports ray tracing. That is why we have to use that kind of advanced lighting system. Photometric light options are here. Most of all, this is options, and this is general functionality. Very easy. Actually, it's, it's not that hard thing or totally new thing. We already did last week as a live exercise. <clears throat> but today, we're going to review in some theoretical part and some, some background theories and advanced parts. Of course, we can on and off. That's, someone asked me, there is no light. If you find out light property was off, that's why light was dark, because that was off. So on and off, fundamental function. Secondly, on and off shadows. Actually, it supports to enable to exclude user-selected objects. You can test it, on and off shadows from that light. light distribution type, photometric web, spotlight, the style, geometric uh, style, and the type, so-called light distribution type, usually just dangle the free light or spotlight, which spotlight to specific object, to specific direction. Color, of course, because we, we need to see its color in diffuse mode, diffuse. And presets, a lot of filter, 
filters are there. Intensity. Intensity simply say the strengths and and the numbers to control its brightness. In candela, in lumens and so on, some different units are there. Emit light from this is I told you this is very important thing. The shape of the light source. Sometimes point, line, or cylinder, but usually sphere, rectangle, cylinder, that's usually we used. Because that's kind of close to real world light form, light shape. <clears throat> okay, shape, area, shadows, emit light from, and the shape here. Simply think about that in real world, in reality, there is no shape of light source in a point. Point light, that's ridiculous. Point is mathematics kind of some, some virtual concept, conceptual meaning. No points or no lines exist in real world. Anyway, anything has some sphere, shape, volume, and cylinder-like object, but it could be very thin. Anyway, point lights, sphere lights, what are different? We, we're going to review today. Interior environments must be flipped for applying lights. OK, this is kind of tip, add-on. Let me tell you about this. Flip. OK, S this is a box. You just model this box using 3D Max, and you render it. Of course, there is a box, blue, white, yellow, whatever, which default color has and shows. But simply, there is a way to create kind of interior space, building inside, kind of pseudo model of the building interior. In that case, we usually select those three surfaces and remove it, or remove only one single face. What if we remove these three faces? In that case, there is something like this. And there is a whole windows and the door. And this one could be kind of virtually made interior, two walls and one bottom floor. But sometimes you, when you render it, even if there is a sun, or interior scenes became black without any color or any lighting source. Because this is surface modeler. Usually for kind of some uh, efficiency problem, they model, when they model this kind of box, they only activate exterior face. Interior face, disabled. It's invisible or just black. So we have to flip this one. Flip means back and forth, the face, flip, flip upside down, and then we can see the color or shadows. So that is why I put that note in this page, because when you test this kind of light system, sometimes you encounter this problem. So that is why I put this. OK, next one, mental ray sky portal and mental ray light. We already handled this one last week. Photometric light for mental ray. And if you want to use V-ray, you're supposed to use V-ray lights, not photometric lights. Even standard light supports both photometric and V-ray. But actually, I told you, never try to use standard object or standard lights, standard something system. Sometimes it's very useful, but basically you have to use photometric lights for mental ray. 
V-ray lights for V-ray, that's baseline. Target light, target light which has its target, its direction, rays direction. Free light emit to 360 degree direction. Freely emit lights. Mental ray sky portal, I told you, and we, we did lab exercise last week. Bring the sun, such as a kind of uh, reflection plate, something like that, just in front of the windows, so that your interior brighter without any artificial lights. In photometric lights, light properties on and off, shadows on and off, intensity control, emit light from. They are very fundamental and important thing. And some other options, visible and dimming, color, something like those options, you can control one by one later if you need. But basically, you have to know and control those three major things. Let me show you some examples and the comparison between different light shapes. <coughs> this is photometric light, emit light from point. There are three points, and thanks to bright intensity, this room has very something brighter seen. It looks very similar, but now its shape is disk around this size. This one, point. This one, disk. What changed? Have you found what changed? Find difference between those two images. That's my quiz. What? Shadow? OK. <laughs> OK, in this point, shape, shadow is kind of stiff and sharp edged. In this shape light, take a look at this shadow, very soft and kind of some softer edged shadows. I think that's much realistic. But sometimes you need this kind of clear edged shadow sometimes. In this case, you can use this kind of shape or some kind of target light even target light can control this softness. But easily control the shadow using this one. Simply think about that. One point emits amount of light, and disk emits some different style of light rays, so that the shadow changed. That's common. So shadow cast, in terms of shadow casting, emit light from point and disk totally change, totally different. And this is another light type, line. In real world, there is no line. But intentionally, you can install lights in line shape with specific lengths. That is why this one has these two uh, bright points on the ceiling and on the bottom. And take a look at shadow, very stiff, sharp edge shadow. But in this case, simply changed disk, a line which has thickness, radius, the circle shape. So take a look at the shadow, totally changed. That's why we need to take care of light shape. Okay. And next thing is camera. We, we need to know camera, especially uh, some DSLR based camera. And some of you may know some details about it. And as far as I know, you, you are taking that class, space and photography. How many students take that class? Or? OK. Taking that class is very useful very interesting course probably, but in terms of technical aspect, there are very few things to know actually. Tech, in terms of technical aspect, you have to know some very important things that, that are gonna be discussed today. 
let me, sum let me summarize some important things in terms of camera. Why we need to know camera? Because the camera defined in 3D Max is, I think, almost 99% exactly the same to the DSLR camera you use in your daily life. So that is why you have to know this kind of terms, focal distance and FOV. FOV, FOV means field of view and multi-pass effect for controlling depths. Let's take a look at some fundamentals about lenses. Focal distance in millimeter, that is the first thing you have to know. What is focal distance in lens? Okay, if f distance, f value is 50 millimeter, uh, not f value, it's focal distance. There is a sensor of human eye, human retina, or CCD or CMOS in camera, or any different type of sensors, and the lens. The distance between those two different objects, that is focal distance. This is 50 millimeter and this is 85 millimeter, longer than 50 millimeter. What changed? The same area of the sensor, same area, but in the same distance, take a look at the area, very narrow, very wide. In other words, this is wide lens. This is kind of telescope lens because the same size of this one is kind of here. So this one can take far or remote objects in the same size, okay? Because of this simple mechanism. So for the architectural, interior architectural design purpose, I have ultra-wide lens, ultra-wide lens, which has 10, 20 millimeter. Mine has some 1.6 uh, multi multiplication, small size, so this is 16 millimeter actually. Anyway, it is very wide lens and I can take entire this room, all you guys in a single frame, just, in, just standing here, because it's really wide. Why it's wide? Because short distance. Okay, simply think about, here's the lens, and this is kind of sensor. This is 10 millimeter. So, this is kind of field of view, the object. Object in the same distance could be very uh, widely visible. But what if the sensor is here and the lens is there? In the same mechanism, we can draw this kind of lines. That's not easy. In the same distance, we, we only can capture this area. So wide and narrow, narrow means kind of telescope. For the same size, really far distance from that one. So I also have another lens, 85 through 300 millimeter. So 300 millimeter lens can take kind of telescope hidden cam. Okay. Simply say, uh, short, in other words, 10 or 18, 25, uh, this kind of sh uh, short distance number generate wide view, wide lens. But 85, 100, 200, 300, they are all kind of telescope. How about 50? 
This is really good for portrait. Portrait your picture, one shot or two shot, for your girlfriend. That is why this kind of lens, so-called girlfriend lens, okay? Very nice, good, very nice for portrait. You know that? Yes. You, do you have 50 millimeter? Yes. For your girlfriend? <laughs> no. Old friend? Okay. Here is a quiz. This is human eye, and there is a sensor, and a, some kind of synapse. And here is, this is eyeball, and there is kind of lens. Human eye can take some kind of uh, focus, but human eye cannot be controlling the distance. How it controls? How, how it, in, in our mechanism, in our lens, this is lens, something like this. There are amount of lenses, and there is a motor. So we can control the distance, those lenses. And this is camera and sensor, right? This is camera and ca lens. Lens has motor to control the distance of the lenses, to control the zoom, 18 through 50, five millimeter. This is standard zoom lens so that we can control 18 millimeter to 55 millimeter. Because it has motor and it has some um, mechanism to control the distance. But human eye, we don't have that kind, this kind of motor or mechanism. No one can make your eyeball bigger or smaller or longer or shorter, right? How to control it? What is the mechanism? Imagine. How to do that? How, how it possible? What? No? Tool? What? Oh? What? Lens? Lens will get Okay. I heard the answer. There is a muscle. This muscle controls tension so that this one can be thicker or thinner, right? Instead of moving around back and forth, we can control the thickness of the lens because this is bio lens, not optic lens. Priceless. That is why your eye is priceless. But someday, some digital mimicry, mimicry, sorry. I don't remember exact the terms, uh, the word. Anyway, biomimicry, which copy some biometric organ or some structure so that you can construct or you can manufacture kind of human or some human organ like objects for our technology. So someday we can develop that kind of lens, but it is much cheaper and handy to make optic lens and to control their distance in mechanical ways. Okay, get back to the lecture slide. And now we take a look at focal distance. And this is wide lens, this is telescope lens. So we have Field of view, FOV, angle of degree. Field of view angle is kind of different approach, but eventually they are some kind of same approach. So architecturally, especially for interior architecture, we need wide lens rather than telescope lens, actually. Especially for interiors, use ultra or wide lenses and pick the best views. So telescope lens, 200, wide lens, 15 millimeter. Here are pros and cons for wide lens. Pros, very good to view all and look sometimes looking very professional. When you get some professional architecture magazine, interior design magazine, most pictures took by this kind of wide lens, ultra wide lens. But the cons are, they are mostly distorted, exaggerated. 
sometimes very far from real. But considering that kind of exaggeration or distorted scenes, we know that. So sometimes no problem. Very effective. Telescope lens, pros, of course, we can zoom in and we can get, get it bigger. But cons, very narrow view. This is very good for uh, photographers for sports, photographers for uh, eagle flying on the sky. They need to get telescope and take pictures. If somebody want to take that kind of picture, use this lens, he can take that eagle by uh, one small black spot. Cannot visible anyway. So very different purpose, but anyway, you have to know. Now we you can see the difference. This is 3D Max screen. 3D Max control only for the camera lens focal distance from 200 millimeter, 85 millimeter, 50, 35, 24. And 24 millimeter is kind of close to human eyesight. I'm not sure exactly how big millimeter is exactly the same to human eyes, eyesight, but 24 millimeter is some kind of closest one. 15 millimeter, ultra wide lens. So take a look at the lines, looking very architectural, some looking professional, because vertical lines are all orthogonal. Anyway, this is 15 millimeter. Uh, reverse direction, 24, 35, 50, 85, 200. This is how you can control camera focal distance. Or you can simply control by the icon for, for this one. We're going to uh, handle this one today. Next one shows you the comparison between 15 millimeter lens versus 15 millimeter lens. Non-wide lens versus wide lens. This is 15 millimeter, very effective on creating undistorted and realistic graphic. Take a look at this one, very realistic. Because of the lines, orthogonal lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines are kind of orthogonal, 90 degree. Realistic and sometimes very standard looking scene. But how about this, 15 millimeter? Effective on creating space perception, impression of space, avoid too much distorted or ex exaggerated. This one of course exaggerated because take a look at this angle. This is kind of looking shorter than, smaller than 90 degree, but that is 90 degree. But this is exaggerated, distor distorted. And the s height of this one is really really taller than this one. But you know, and we know that those two height are exactly the same, but really exaggerated. But we can feel the impression from this space. We can feel the depth of the space, thanks to this wide view. But there is one thing you have to know. You, when you take picture, the horizontal lines, must be orthogonal. In other words, exactly parallel to your physical, physical horizontal line. Okay? That is one principle. Second one is vertical line must be exactly parallel to physical parallel, uh, sorry, horizontal lines like this. So that is why this picture looking standardized and very stable and looking without any problem. That is very important. In this case, it is not possible to make these lines parallel to horizontal lines. But next thing I told you, at least this uh, vertical line must be parallel to vertical. When you take pictures, you don't know this principle. Probably you may learn from that space and photography class. When you take pictures, you have to follow this rule. And take a look at 
architecture magazine, interdesign magazine, interarchitecture magazine, whatever. The pictures taken by professionals. This rule, 100% restrict, strictly uh, conveyed. What I mean is, at least this kind of vertical lines are exactly standing 90 degree to your physical horizontal line. But sometimes you're rendering these kind of lines, that makes your rendering scene non-professional and very looking cheap, okay? Soon, and move on to the lab exercises. Five, series of five lab exercises today. Let's take a look at some picture photos, examples by ultra-wide lens and telescope lens, com comparison between them. Actually, all the pictures here taken by me. The first one, this is an office, uh, Autodesk San Francisco office, and this is my desk. This was my desk. And if I see the right side, there is a huge window, and I can see very building on Market Street. Very famous, a kind of a gateway to the San Francisco uh, sizing area, downtown area. Anyway, when you take the scene of this one, take a look at, take a look at this dangled sculpture on the ceiling. The one module, another module, but this module and this one is exactly the same size, but really distorted, exaggerated. So we can feel the depth of, the spatial depth, spatial depth, spatial depth of that space. So, not special, spatial depths, okay? For taking this kind of wide lens, we can feel spatial depths. This area looking very wide and broad and some kind of huge because it has depths in, in this direction. How about this? This is Georgia Tech College of Architecture building. In this area, in this spot, I took the picture, and this is L-shaped corridor, actually, and the corridor end is looking over there, and right side also looking there. But as you know, this is exactly 90 degree corner, but take a look at the height of, those, of this corner, and take a look at the pattern on the ceiling. Also, we can feel really deep, spatial depths thanks to that kind of wide lens, 10 milli. In other words, 16 millimeter in 35 millimeter film size. So this wide lens shows us very uh, broad and wide view so that you can feel this space has really deep depths so that kind of exaggerated or something uh, accented Spatial view, spatial view, that, that term spatial, not special, okay? Spatial view we can create. This is also ultra wide lens view. The cloud over here, actually that was located exactly on my head above. But we can take entire view, entire scenery like this. For example, take a look at the building and the tree. They are heading to something over here because of this kind of distortion, exaggeration. So we can take this broad and wide view thanks to that lens. Another one taken by me on John Hancock building, Chicago. Take this uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines in kind of uh, orthogonal in our physical lines, so that this view, this scene, makes the picture style very broad and wide, even if it's uh, just one single, one, one single direction focused picture. Another example, 
taken by me, Moon at Scottsdale, Arizona. This is telescope lens. <coughs> Using some telescope lens, another huge real telescope. Through the viewfinder, I take the picture. I took this pic picture so that I can acquire this kind of very uh, detailed moon surface at the time. So s at the time, I was in some engineering conference. I met someone from Caltech who's researching moon, and he's, he's writing some books, a book about the moon. And he asked me to get this picture so that he used this one in his book. I don't know his book, but anyway, he got my copied picture from me for this one. Now it's time to get something about, know something about depth of field. So depth of field, in other words, that is kind of out-focused, in-focused pictures. Uh, in order to make your scenes photorealistic and professional. Especially for portrait pictures, for portrait, usually we use very deep depths for architectural purpose pictures. But for portraits, we focus on only portrait faces or other objects possibly out-focused so that some acquired very effective pictures. The concept depth of field is here. This is shallow depth because this is focus zone. Something within this area, something within this zone going to be focused. All others going to be out focused. So very shallow depth. Shallow depth. And if picture take this kind of deep depth, in other words, anything around here, all the objects going to be in focus. In that case, we say that is deep depth. This is shallow depth. For taking portrait, shallow depth going to be OK. And your face, your friend's face, supposed to be here, not here. OK? So all others going to be out focused. This is very uh, straightforward explanation about the depth of field. What is multi-pass effect? Multi-pass effect is the name of 3D Max camera, one of the camera options. You can control multi-pass enable so that you can take that kind of rendering. Specific things in focus and some of them out focused. So let's take a look at. You must select depth of field mental array so that you can create that kind of render scenes. But the problem of this one is taking really, really longer time without that, compared to without that effect. So some, some keys and some options, some notes I put here for generating that kind of pictures. But my recommendation is here. Just render without multi-pass. No need to apply that one in 3D Max level. Just Photoshop. Because Photoshop is kind of world best and perfect software, OK? It's very effective and very some time, time efficient. But one problem, if you model very complicated object and you cannot count which one is close, which one is in that depth of field, in that depth, in that case, sometimes making Photoshop for generating that kind of image is much hard. In that case, you can render using this kind of features, OK? Here is an example. I took this picture at the San Francisco Autodesk Gallery designed by Zaha Hadid Office. Zaha Hadid Office, as according to this description, they called this one a new type of building, even if it looks like a bridge or something. But this bridge-looking structure is kind of building for people. So, Anyway, I don't, I don't want to talk about the design itself. I would like to show you an example. This is focus zone. That is why we can see the focus, in focus object surface here. But all others are extremely out focused. I took this picture building close to that structure. How about this? This area is now focus zone. 
but all others are focused. So you, you know this kind of picture, especially in port port portraits. In this case, all out focused, only this area is focus zone and its depth. Very shallow depths. What if this, the depth is very deep? All the objects are going to be in focus. Very simple. This one, the same example I showed you before. In a couple of seconds, we can render this because this is very simplified object. With a few lights, some shadows, and some post geometry, we can quickly render it. Because basically, we use very deep depth focus zone or are uh, in focus. What if we use only shallow focus zone here? I intentionally made this one shallow focus zone, the second post, but all others out focused. Actually, there are some noise because I didn't put some detailed shadow sample or render sample for saving time. But anyway, even I put some coarse generated option, it takes a couple of minutes. How about this? Changing the depth focus zone to that red colored post. And then mental ray rendered or out focused and in focused, something like this. Shallow depths also takes a couple of minutes. But let me show you a simple another example done by Photoshop. In Photoshop, just get this image and elapse the time around just one minute. Select focus zone and select use, using feather and put Gaussian blur. That's it. So this is outcome from Photoshop. Focused on third object, the third post, OK? The same effect, but done by Photoshop. So that is why I mentioned Photoshop edits for your further work. Any questions in, in this regard, camera issues? We need to take a look at camera things in 3D Max real interface so that we can get aware of some detailed functions and some uh, technical aspects of uh, 3D Studio Max or even other software, OK? OK, now it's time to get move on to lab exercise. Let's get started. 3D Max and V-Ray issues and so on. <laughs>